my my name is Ija Hussain. Um, I am a um, developer and architect company called Advania UK, um, same company as Anoop. Uh, I'm also Max of MVP. Uh, here's my uh, LinkedIn and X uh, handle. Please get in touch uh, if you want to talk about M365, um, Azure, Power Platform, anything you like. Uh, so today we're looking into building HR AI assistant with RAG implementation uh, app. So um, let me before jump into this one. So the what is RAG? I mean, we need to understand first before we go to the AI, uh, the, uh, the whole app architecture. So the RAG is basically technical definition is LLM. It's an integrate the large language model with the information retrieval system to provide the grounding data. But in a simple term, I would say it combines AI with the retrieval system for accurate fact-based responses. Um, so um, going into the retrieval system, so um, we using, I'm using a URI search, so any retrieval system, these are the four major things needs to, uh, major components we need for the, uh, for the retrieval system to uh, work properly. So indexing strategies, uh, query capabilities, security, reliability, and ability to in, uh, integration with the embedding as well. So we'll be using all these uh, when we're using uh, today in the sample. Uh, then with approaches for the RAG with Azure AI search, so uh, you know, there's a built-in um, approaches available uh, by Microsoft uh, when using the RAG with Azure AI search. So you can use Azure AI Foundry, you can use Azure OpenAI and with Azure Machine Learning uh, with the prompt flow. So uh, these are built in uh, available by Microsoft when using RAG with Azure AI search. So if you look at the app architecture, so what, is, uh, what, we, are, what we have today is the SPFX app uh, where we have a chat application and the request goes to our uh, backend system, uh, which basically uh, send the request to Azure AI search. We get the result back our knowledge based on the query, and then we pass that results uh, from the Azure AI search to the LLM using the Azure OpenAI, and then get the response back. And the data source we are using here is the SharePoint um, HR FAQ list. Uh, so, um, so that's the data source, which is basically been synced into Azure AI uh, search via the uh, storage account. Uh, there is a connectors uh, directly available for the Azure AI search for the SharePoint, but not for the SharePoint list. So that's why I had to go via a storage account and storage account is, uh, you know, natively integrate quite well with Azure AI search. So uh, we'll look into this one also in a minute. So, um, so before we go into uh, uh, kind of a, see the UI and the demo, we need to and create the Azure, um, configure our Azure AI search setting. We need to have the data source. We need to find out where is our data source is. How can we bring this data from? It could be in SharePoint list, could be somewhere into Azure AI search. So Azure AI search does, as I said previously, does provide out of the box some connectors like Share to SharePoint, but does not support the SharePoint list at the moment. Uh, uh, so I had to build. Uh, use this approach where I am I, I build a custom Azure function, which uh, running all the time um, a timer job, uh, syncing data from the shipper online list into Azure storage table. And the Azure storage table is the data source finally, which is being linked with Azure AI search. So first we need to understand where is our data, how can we bring and make, make it accessible to Azure AI search. And once we got this data here, uh, I mean, this is the opportunity where you can clean up data as well uh, uh, from your external system. Like my, you might be, you, you don't want to index every single thing. So few properties which are important for your users to search on. Uh, so this is the opportunity at this stage, clean up the data and link to the Azure AI search. And then when we go ahead and set up the Azure AI search so that we, uh, our data is available and we can start curing the data from our application. These are the four main um, uh, uh, components that you need to create. Um, data source, you need to create first a data source, then you uh, have your index get created with the different properties, skill sets, and then indexers. Once all these four things, got, it looks 
complicated by the the uh, by the titles, but they are not really complicated. So let me show you what I mean uh, when I say it's not really complicated. So if I move this here, so first of all, uh, the simple JSON. Uh, if I go in data source, so simple. Uh, this is a uh, sorry. This is a JSON implementation of the data source. So simply say what data source you want. Uh, it's, in my case, is a your table. You provide the connection string and then copy this and go back to your. Um, uh, let me move this away. Um, your AI search. So go to the data source and say add data source from JSON paste this there and create and that will create your data source simple is that no no difficult uh, uh, process involved and after the data source got created you need to go back and create your index and this is where you can define which are the fields from the sharepoint list in my case uh, these are the fields are like answer questions answer category tags and i can just um, probably and then uh, uh, there's one field you have to create for the embedding if you want to do vector search. I'll, I'll go into detail in a second. And there's uh, some uh, some settings if you want to a semantic search. Uh, if and this is the vector search profile setting. Uh, you need this one if you want to do semantic and vector search uh, uh, search on the Azure. AI. There are some techniques in Azure AI which uh, it depends on your scenario which one you will use. Whether you want semantic, whether you want the vector search, or whether you want the hybrid. So it depends on your scenario as well. So you can basically define all this when you create an index with your fields, and then after this one, you go ahead and. Uh, create the skill set. So in my case, what you're doing is it's going uh, is linked with my uh, data source. So it's uh, looping through the skill set. It are, uh, is available by default. I did not write myself. Uh, it's available by Microsoft. This skill name. So it takes my data from the storage account every single and generate embedding uh, and putting into the embedding uh, field which I've created in my index. So it's doing automatically for me when I run the indexer. So I have that skill in the middle. And then at the at the at the end, I have indexer. So that's define, you know, uh, you know where you can define your scheduler, how 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 frequent you want to your indexer to run, and and what's the data source is, what the index name is, what the skill set name is, etc. So this guy is, does the running job. Uh, so once all these, if I go back to um, so uh, so once all this get created, uh, you would have your uh, your uh, or you can run the indexer and then it will index data from the storage account into a URI search and then you can simply um, query this from your application. So let's quickly uh, jump onto the demo. Um, so I'll move this one here. So so this is the SPFX web part, uh, chat application. Uh, uh, so uh, behind the scene. Uh, I've got the Azure function, which uh, getting the question from here, and then which basically calling the Azure AI search and Azure OpenAI, and I'm getting the responses back here. So we can go back to the code in a second as well. So let's suppose I have a, uh, so let's say I want to know how to expense travel cost. Um, so if I just go ahead and send. Live demo. I've got screenshot if it doesn't work. So yes, you could see here is uh, it basically uh, goes to uh, your AI search, get the relevant data, uh, the top uh, uh, I think two or th uh, three answers retrieved, and then he passed this information to uh, LLM at uh, your OpenAI to uh, to further um, provide me the response, which I can give it to user. Uh, so I can try a few more. Let's say. Um, how do I apply for my annual leave? So imagine if you have a, like a, I mean, this is a, just an example of, and it's all really quick as well. So imagine if we have, a, a, you know, hundreds of policies in HR and it's really hard to go and go through one by one and ask the, uh, you know, uh, um, check one by one and try to find the answers. And if we have all these index and some other lists as well and data sources, you can simply ask the question for here. So. Uh, you get the results where you want it. Um, so that's the demo. And then if you quickly go uh, into the code, how did I do that? Um, so uh, in here, uh, first of all, I'll go to data sync. So in here, uh, really easy. Uh, uh, I, I've got the SPF list item from the shipment list and use the um, uh, SDK to put the data into my 
uh, storage account. Simple is that the, in the table. So that's where it's syncing happening and you can run this uh, your function uh, as a background process. And then once the data is in there, uh, I've got the API, which uh, I'll go to uh, a URI search first. When the request comes in, I've got this function being called and I've got this parameter use vector search and semantic search. It's not hooked up with the uh, uh, with with the UI, but ideally it could have been a UI as well. So at the moment I'm using the vector search in here, but uh, if we uh, if I wanted to use the semantic search, I can I can provide the configuration of the semantic search within my query uh, to let a your AI search. I want to use the semantic search. If I want to use the hybrid, I, uh, you can also define a, both of them, and it will use the hybrid. Uh, if, when you are performing the query. So once the result comes in, it sends back the results, and then I pass the result to Azure OpenAI service, and, and this is where it does the uh, completion. Uh, once you got the completion and the result go back to my UI, uh, which you have seen uh, here, here. So that's all from me, guys. Uh, if you have any question, happy to answer. Thank you.